direct labor price variance and the direct labor efficiency variance. Just like materials, there's going to be one of each. One for price, one for efficiency, except we're talking labor now. The focus of direct labor price variance is on the spending money paying labor. Did we spend more or less on direct labor than what we budgeted? The standard, right? Did we spend more or less than the standard? Well, we'll start by taking the actual hours worked. And then what's in the parentheses is going to be, look at that, the actual rate minus the standard rate, because that's what we're focusing on. Did we pay more or less than the standard for labor? If we spent more on labor than we budgeted, that's unfavorable. If we spent less, that's favorable. If we, bought, if we used cheaper labor, we saved cash up front, but we took a risk of having a lot of inefficiency. If we spent more on labor, we spent more, but we're hoping to get it back with efficiency. So go to 47. Selected costs associated with a product are as follows. Standard hours for units produced, 5,000. Total actual direct labor cost, 111, 625. Actual per hour labor rate, Standard per hour labor rate, calculate the direct labor price variance. Where do we start? Start with the difference in the price. You spent 50 cents more per hour or 50 cents less? 50 cents less. You saved a little on labor. You bought cheaper labor for 50 cents less per hour. Now, if you multiply that times the actual hours or the standard hours, because I don't see the actual hours, I see the standard hours, right, the actual hours. Well, first of all, how, many, how much is the actual hours? Because they don't give us that. Right. Yes, that's the only thing we could do is take the actual direct labor cost and divide it by the actual per hour rate. That'll tell you how many hours they worked. So the 47, that's 47.50. Right, there were 47.50 hours worked, right? And if you multiply the 47.50 times 50 cents, you know what the direct labor price variance is. What is it? 2375 favorable. Good. Letter D. And the explanation's on slide 50. So if you go back over this another time, there it is for you. 51. Total standard hours for units produced. Once again, we want the direct labor rate variance. You may have to do the same thing again and get the number of hours worked. Yes, 12,000 unfavorable. Once again, you had to determine how many hours were worked by taking the 120,000 and dividing by the actual per hour rate. Okay, direct labor efficiency, 53. Now we're focusing in on not the cost of labor, but how many hours they worked minus the standard hours allowed. So for that level of production, how many hours were allowed? Let's say they made 100 cars, and it's supposed to only take one hour per car, but it actually took them three hours per car. That's what we're focusing in on now, the efficiency of the labor. Actual hours worked minus the standard hours allowed will tell us whether we used more hours or less than the standard. And then if you multiply that by the standard rate, because this is an efficiency variance, you'll always multiply by the standard dollar amount or the standard rate, not the actual. So the direct labor usage variance focuses on the usage of labor. And let's see, let's put some numbers in. We'll start with 54 first. The difference between standard hours at the standard wage rate and actual hours at the standard wage rate is referred to as which of the following types of variances? Labor usage, good. 
56, a company produces a product known as a modal with budgeted standard direct materials of three pounds per modal at five dollars per pound. Standard direct labor was budgeted at, 50, at, at 0.5 hours per modal. So it should only take half an hour to make a modal. It should only take half an hour. And they're going to get $15 per hour. And the actual usage was 22,000 pounds and 4,000 hours to produce 10,000 modals. What was the direct labor usage variance? Now, once again, they're giving you more information than you need. Because all we need to know is how many hours should it have taken to make 10,000 modals and how many hours did it take? Right, because it only took 4,000 hours instead of taking 5,000 hours. We saved 1,000 hours mm -hmm. times the standard labor rate of $15 an hour. That's a $15,000 favorable labor efficiency, right? The number of hours saved was 1,000, and the cost per hour on that was a standard of 15. That's $15,000 favorable. Note, the information given on the pounds of materials and the cost per pound, totally irrelevant. But typical of the CPA exam, Right? See what they gave you that you didn't need? You didn't need 22,000 pounds. You didn't need $5 per pound. Or three pounds. Or, th or three pounds. Right. But that's typical. They'll give you that. 58. Management has reviewed the standard cost variance analysis and is trying to explain an unfavorable labor efficiency variance of $8,000. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the variance? See? Yeah, I'd go along with that. Yeah, because if the machinery was inadequate, that means it breaks down a lot. And then people are standing around and they can't work. So that's going to lead to an inefficient use of labor. What about these other ones? How about D? If the quality of raw materials has improved greatly, well, that's going to increase efficiency, not decrease it. And A, the new labor contract increases the wages, but that's going to increase the cost of wages. That's not going to do anything about efficiency. And highly skilled workers, that should make you more efficient. So it's got to be C.